Now is the time of the year where we enjoy the fruits of our labor, all the research that we have done personally and watched it for, for, for other NFL teams. It's the time of the year when we grade drafts, and I'm just so excited to be in this time of the year. Draft season truly is my one of some of my favorite time of the year, other than football season, other than football season. But I, for one, am truly very excited. The Jacksonville Jaguars, to me, had an A draft. They got an A overall, and we're going to get into it over the all of the individual picks and, and analysis but make sure you guys like and subscribe down below leave a like and a comment it helps people find the show we greatly appreciate it the jaguars to me were a lot closer than a lot of people thought i mean they have some pieces lavisca chenault we, we we touched on it uh on our, our previous video uh we've also touched on the fact uh that to be quite honest with you uh i thought james robinson was a top 10 running back last year Total tank it over a thousand rushing yards, uh, both from my recollection, caught over forty passes. So I mean, I was absolutely ecstatic. So the Jacksonville Jaguars, to me, didn't need much to be able to get themselves back in contention, but boy, did they get some dudes. Uh, and we're going to start it right now with obviously Trevor Lawrence. Now, clearly, any time that you get a franchise quarterback like Trevor Lawrence, it's going to make the overall draft an A. Just in my general opinion, because at the end of the day. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, I think, can have the ability to be that Peyton Manning, Tom Brady-esque type player um, as he goes forward with his NFL career. And I think he's going to be a lot of fun to watch uh, for the Jacksonville Jaguar fans, even for the rest of the NFL, uh, even a, a person like myself that can appreciate uh, good quarterback play. So I'm really excited to see what he does. Uh, you talk about a guy that has it all. I mean, played at a big-time program, won a, nat won a natty, won a natty, uh, did his thing. Uh, probably has, in my opinion, uh, I best quarterback in the draft but has the best arm best hair maybe i don't know maybe another conversation for another day but definitely um out there slinging it athletic enough also showed he could tuck it and run when he has to um just he is the he is the real deal reads defenses um and just he is the real deal that's all you want from a guy like trevor lawrence um, and clearly i give this pick an a uh you, you just you know it's just a great pick, and it was honestly. I'm not trying to be rude, but it was kind of the easiest pick. I, I've seen drafts where people selected Zach Wilson. I'm sorry, but Zach, Zach Wilson is not the same player as Trevor Lawrence. But in the end of the day, uh, I'm really excited to see what this man does uh, in the NFL as a, both a starting quarterback uh, and also as a, as a player in the NFL. So I'm really uh, NFL rather, excuse me. So really excited to see what Trevor Lawrence does for the Jacksonville Jaguars moving forward. Um, then the Jacksonville Jaguars went and they had the 25th pick overall. Um, they drafted a running back, which I thought at first before I saw the name was a little bit. Uh, I, I honestly generally don't think that running backs are worth a, a first round pick anymore uh, just because of uh, you, you get undrafted guys. I mean, we talked about it. James Robinson, undrafted guy that came in and did, and did some things last year. So I generally thought that you didn't really need to grab a running back in the first round anymore uh, just because the, the position has changed so much uh, since over the years and it's become more of a pass happy league. But they did go out and draft Travis Etienne, uh, the running back out of Clemson. Now, I watched a lot of tape on him. I thought he was a very explosive player, breaks tackles, uh, catches, this, especially his last two years uh, in the NFL. A little bit of a background on Travis. Um, you know, 40 year player uh, for the Crimson, uh, for the Cl um, Clemson Tigers, excuse me. Uh, uh, I believe he has the, he owns the ACC record for most rushing yards in a single career, nearly 5,000. Um, averaged a career, a career 7.2 yards per carry. Also scored 70 rushing touchdowns. I mean, just the pedigree is there for this man. Also, um, Scored a career, uh, excuse me, also caught 37 and 48 passes in his last two years with Clemson, respectively. Uh, six total touchdowns, receiving touchdowns in those last two years, eight total in his career. Now, um, I, at first, like I said, I was a little hesitant about the pick uh, because, again, I don't, my whole stance on the running backs in the first round, but if you watch his tape, um, he's clearly uh, a game changing player. Uh, my only nit, nitpick on this pick, really, is the fact they already had James Robinson, who I said uh, had over had a had over a thousand rushing yards. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, getting two guys like this in your building, uh, I think it's a great great fit, um, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Um, uh, James Robinson actually almost caught 50 passes, 49 catches last year, also had three touchdowns. So you get a both uh, rushing and receiving threats from both James Robinson and also Travis Etienne. I, I apologize if I apologize if I say his name wrong, but um, at the end of the day, the Jacksonville Jaguars got themselves a playmaker uh, in the running back position, and it's really just going to help bolster their offense. I mean, because he he can catch the ball very very well. He's a mitz mismatch 
for linebackers to cover coming out of the backfield, and he's going to be a fun player to watch. Um, and it's running back is it's a sexy pick. We can't deny that when you see a running back instead of a lineman, it's a you love that pick. You really do. So, no, uh, but at the end of the day, I love the pick. Uh, overall, I gave it um, gave it a B plus because I love the player. Uh, didn't love the pick, but I love the player. Uh, the only reason I gave it a B plus was because again, I felt like they already had James Robinson. They have weapons on the offensive side of the football. I felt there were other players on the board that could have helped them right away. But I think yeah, Travis Etienne is going to play Etienne, excuse me, is going to play right away. But I just felt there was other players on the board, but I gave it a B plus, uh, gave it some love, um, a little bit there. So, um, then in the, in the first pick of the second round, the, the Jacksonville Jaguars selected with the 33rd overall pick, they selected Tyson Campbell, a cornerback out of Georgia. I'm not trying to be rude, but this was the one pick that I really think I didn't truly get um, just because I felt there were so, like Trayvon Holland. I mean, there were so many other good corners on the board, and uh, they, they picked Campbell, which I don't necessarily have a problem with, uh, who's uh, a three-year player for um, the Georgia Bulldogs. Um, had a career 50, uh, excuse me, 89 tackles, 58 solo. That is one sack. Also only had one interception in college. Now, I get that they're probably... Uh, banking more in potential here um, but at the end of the day you had other corners that could have gone uh, that you could have gotten um, and I, I was a little concerned about the team not putting a little bit more of an emphasis in the later rounds uh, because they do have a corner need so um, I don't hate the pick uh, I gave it a C plus overall because I felt like there were better corners on the board but if he pans out uh, I'll be extremely excited for the Jacksonville Jaguars because it's um, you know it's the draft you got to be excited for him but uh, at the top of the second I thought there were better picks um, that the uh, that the Jaguars could have gotten. Now, later on, 12 picks later, with the 45th overall selection in the second round, the Jaguars selected Walker Little, offensive tackle out of Stanford. I like Walker Little. You watch a little bit of his tape. Uh, he's a mauler. He goes after it. Um, I I felt like he was a first-round draft pick. That's kind of where I had him at. So to get him in the second round, I clearly give this pick an A. Um, I feel like uh, this is a, a guy that's going to come in, should potentially come in and start right away and add a lot of value to this offensive line for the Jaguars who have a huge tackle need. So you get a running back to help out Trevor Lawrence. You get an offensive line help. Um, uh, and the only thing is uh, my question is about the tight end position with this team, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but again, you get an offensive tackle right here, uh, and I'm really, really excited to see what Walker Little does um, in the NFL and with the Jaguars. I really think he's going to be a fun player to watch um, moving forward. Um, but a little bit about uh, Walker a Little um, with with the Stanford, Stanford, excuse me, um, was a all Pac-12 first team selection in 2018. Also a Pac-12 uh, fall academic honor in 20 uh, in 2019 as well. Uh, also in 2021, the out. Outland Trophy uh, was on the Outland Trophy watch list, um, was on all the preseason All-American, you know, second teams and all that jazz, too, as well. Um, and I, I liked what he did at the Senior Bowl, too. I really did. Uh, I really felt like he was going to be a player that uh, you had to watch and just see what he did. Um, and uh, I really liked what he did. I thought he held his own against some of the pass rushers uh, that that had to offer. So um, I was extremely excited to see uh, where he would go. Again, felt like he was a first-round draft pick, and that Jaguars got him uh, at 45. So I thought it was an extremely good value. Um, and I was really excited to see him go there. And, hey, it takes care of a need. And as the Jacksonville Jaguars uh, look to show up their offensive line, once again, A for that pick. And then with the 65th overall selection of the third round, the Jacksonville Jaguars selected Andre Sisco, corner, uh, excuse me, safety out of Syracuse. Love this pick. Holy man, I love this pick. He is a stud. I mean, you come out. Now uh, playing in the ACC, uh, playing against good competition. 136 career total tackles uh, and total, total 13 interceptions. A, a ball hawk. I mean, this guy goes out and gets it. He just seems to be around the football. I really like Cisco. I think he's going to really bring a lot to this Jacksonville Jaguar defense. And I'm really excited to see what he'll offer them uh, just in terms of uh, whether it's right away starting or as a special teams guy, but I think he could start right away. Uh, I think he should start right away for his ability to go out and create turnover. So um, I love Andre, the Andre Cisco pick. I'm a little, uh, I'm a little interested to see what he'll do. He only played uh, in two games in 2020, but uh, like I said, guy's a natural ball hawk. He's going to provide a lot, a lot of value uh, for the Jacksonville Jag Jaguars moving forward. Uh, well, with this pick, I gave it an A because I just, I love the ball. I love him being a ball hawk. I love him going out there and covering guys. So extremely excited for this pick. Um, and in the fourth round, 106th overall selection, the Jacksonville Jaguars selected Jay Tufele. I have watched an immense amount of tape on Jay Tufele. Um, I love the effort. I love the way he comes off the line and does his thing. Now, 
The only thing with me with the J2 Fele is uh, was a 2020 opt out. I don't really count that against him. Here's the thing, he he could either be a boom or bust guy. Uh, you think you talk about having six and a half career sacks, especially in the on the inside there at six three three oh five. I mean, he could either be one of the best pass rushing defensive linemen in the draft, uh, and even a good run stopper, or this could this pick could fall like just about any pick in the NFL draft. But this could be a very special pick for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I gave it a B. Um, because uh, at, at the end of the day, uh, there were, to my recollection, uh, it's it, it's tough because you get you get down in this. I was really hoping they were going to try to target a tight end in the third round uh, or, or in fourth round, excuse me. So um, I felt like they could have uh, maybe got Brevin Jordan or, or something else to help out the tight end group. But I, I, get, I love Tufele. I think he's going to provide a lot of value here uh, and, and, you know, just really try to find that defensive interior presence he's gonna he's gonna look great with Dwayne Smoot he really is and I'm really excited to see but J2 Fele like I said he could be a boom or bust guy that's giving you that extra little bit of juice in your interior pass rush game love it love it love it love it gave it a B um next 15 picks later in the fourth round uh number 121 overall the Jacksonville Jaguars selected Jordan Smith defensive end uh, out of the University of Alabama Birming Birmingham I believe I believe uh, that it was, was it Tavares Jackson or Joe Webb that played for UAB? I can't remember, but uh, former Vikings quarterbacks, I'm sorry. Um, can't remember off the top of my head as I'm doing a completely different video here. But now I have to be honest, uh, this pick, uh, at first I wasn't a huge fan, but as after you watch some tape on him and uh, and see what he did in his, in, his, in his rookie, or excuse me, his freshman year at UAB, I mean, you talk about a guy that had 14 and a half sacks, uh, 14 and a half tackles for loss, rather, eight sacks, 48 total tackles, came back the next year. Um, played in only eight games as opposed to 13 his freshman year. Had nine total tackles for loss, four and a half sacks. Also had a pick. Um, and I think if you watch him, uh, you really get excited by his athletic ability and his size at 6'6", his length. You just love that coming around the edge. Now, do they do, do all these draft picks have, have things to work on? Um, I think that you could see him uh, evolve, though, with the Jacksonville Jaguars. And I think you're going to see a guy that could potentially be, especially in the fourth round, he could be uh, a major gem, a, a diamond in the rough, if you will, uh, finding him in the, those later rounds. But um, I mean, only a two-year player coming out of college. Um, there's probably some uh, some analysts that are a little weary about that, but at the end of the day, I love the pick, um, and I think he's going to do some tremendous things for the Jaguars. In the fifth round, at one, uh, with the 145th selection, the Jacksonville Jaguars selected Luke Farrell, tight end out of Ohio State. I felt like the Jacksonville Jaguars, again, they needed to go get Brevin Jordan, uh, uh, Friar Muff, everybody. They needed to get somebody, and I just... I think they should have a targeted the tight end position a little bit sooner, but Luke Farrell, i uh, give you guys a little bit of a background. Uh, Mr. Farrell uh, was, in my mind, more of a blocking tight end, um, and I felt like he was uh, more of a guy that was probably going to come in right away and just uh, do what he could uh, in that regard. But uh, had a total of 34 catches over four years, had 34 catches, 380 yards, and four touchdowns. Again, more of a blocking tight end, but you love his size at 6'6", 260 pounds. Um, maybe Trevor Lawrence can maybe make him into more of a receiving tight end, but he was clearly more of a blocking tight end at Stanford because they love to run the football. You know that. Um, so at the end of the day, I, uh, Jordan Smith, by the way, gave that pick a B. Now Luke Farrell, this pick, I, I gotta give it a C plus. I'm sorry. I just felt like overall there were better tight ends on the board. You could have drafted earlier because this, you're not looking for a, a blocking tight end, especially if you're the Jacksonville Jaguars. You're looking for weapons for Trevor Lawrence and, I felt maybe they could have done a little bit better here. Who knows? Maybe Luke Farrell could come out and just absolutely start annihilating people and just own the league. It could be, I don't know, uh, the next Travis Kelsey or, yeah, maybe not Travis Kelsey, but, I mean, I mean, you never know. It's the NFL draft. These guys come into the NFL uh, and they, they they develop. So you really know. Even George Kittle. Maybe it could be George Kittle. I don't know. But at the end of the day, um, I do feel like he could definitely come in. Uh, he's going to clearly come in and block, but we'll see what else he can do um, for Jacksonville. So, um, And then the final pick in the sixth round, the Jacksonville Jaguars selected uh, with a 209th pick from the uh, from the Los Angeles Rams. They selected Jalen Camp, wide receiver out of Georgia Tech. Now, the thing about Jalen Camp for me is not a ton of college production, uh, but you like, the, you like his tape. You like what he does uh, for the wide receiver group. Now here, I... I thought overall this this group was relatively stacked, but at the end of the day, a guy that caught over for four years caught 46 passes, 786 yards, and five touchdowns. You really, especially since you got Trevor Lawrence at quarterback, this could be a very fun pick uh, because you really never know 
uh, what these guys are going to do coming out of college. You really, it, nobody really ever knows. Nobody knows anything, to be, I, I guess, is the best way to put it. Like Because nobody knows the future is probably a better way to put it. So Jalen Camp, uh, I liked the pick. Um, I gave it a B overall, especially uh, given the fact you got him in the sixth round. I'm, I'm banking more on potential here. Um, you know, And he, he really kind of seemed to come out in his senior year um, catching 27 passes for 417 yards and four touchdowns. So overall... I gave the Jacksonville Jaguars grade. Once again, I gave their overall draft grade an A um, because you get you get a, a franchise quarterback in Trevor Lawrence, even though it's probably the easiest pick in the draft. Then you get a good running back, a good, a really good running back in Travis Eddian out of a Clemson in the first round still. You get a future uh, a tackle for you in Walker Little. Tyson Campbell could still pan out. We never know. Uh, Andre Sisco, stud safety out of Syracuse. Jay Tufele, love the pick here. I think he's going to be a fantastic interior pass rusher for the Jaguars. Jordan Smith, I mean, you bank on that athleticism. You bank on that edge presence. I think he's going to be a lot of fun. Luke Farrell, you never know what you're going to get out of him. Maybe he can come out and be a gem for you. I know he's going to block, but we'll, we'll see what else he can do. And then finally, Jalen Camp. Um, overall, um, just a a a a love the draft. I uh, felt like this is going to be a lot of fun moving forward. So, but let me know what you guys think. Uh, how did you guys think that the Jacksonville Jaguars made it out of the 2021 NFL Draft? Um, once again, make sure to like and subscribe down below. Leave a like and a comment. We love and appreciate all the support that we've gotten. And if you're looking for to follow us uh, on on social media, we leave all of our handles down in the description down below. So make sure you guys check that out. Um, then also check us out on iTunes. I know that we we post a lot there. So if you guys want to listen to us that's the best way to do it instead of watch but also uh, make sure that you guys check out our website at the sportsbeefpodcast.com and uh you know let's just get ready for the nfl season thanks for joining us